Okay, so if you actually want to get into the client side development, I think you're going to have to look at several new technologies. Now, as far as the IDE, I mean, some Microsoft is saying that you know you should use you know, most of the examples you will find out there is that they're using Visual Studio Code, which is a different development environment than Visual Studio Enterprise. You know, Enterprise has in Professional, Ultimate. Um, and then community, uh, that's the that what we call enterprise, right? But Visual Studio Code is more like Sublime and most of those other IDEs that are non-Microsoft that are used mostly in uh, like Java development or pure JavaScript development before Microsoft actually starting to get heavily in the JavaScript space, right? So, um, so one, you know, you have to look at Visual Studio Code and then you have to look at uh, a, a JavaScript framework either with Angular JS. Or, um, or in addition to React uh, and understanding that AngularJS is going to follow the MVC model and React is going to be more so the V uh, at MVC um, in, in that regard. But then you have other frameworks as far as like styling and UI and stuff like that. And uh, Bootstrap is really good for that. Uh, Bootstrap, uh, I think 4.0 is like an alpha or beta version. They're uh, redesigning their framework. They're, they're changing some of their core concepts. So I would highly recommend looking at 4.0 so that way you kind of are ahead of the curve. Uh, but if you're doing something that's production, you probably want to do one that's more stable, uh, obviously. But um, but those are the things that you have to under, uh, really understand. And then you got TypeScript, which I think is more of, of a preference. Um, it, I don't think Microsoft uh, with the new SharePoint development framework is going to force you under the TypeScript uh, piece, even though most of their samples may have it. But the TypeScript is really just going to try to provide you some uh, type, uh, strongly typing uh, JavaScript objects, and then also integrating with the IDE uh, just to make it, you know, uh, more friendly as far as uh, intelligence and things, uh, things along those lines. So, um, so TypeScript is really just going to help you uh, in, in that regard because one of the issues that I always run into especially coming from the .NET uh, development background where I'm used to IntelliSense, I'm used to compile errors, I'm used to, you know, build errors when something is not right or I missed a reference or whatever the case may be, you're not, you're not going to get that in JavaScript. And it's, it's, very, it's a very loose language in my, in, my, in my perspective. And any structure that you create is really kind of like in your mind. And that's why it's very important to have a framework, the one that kind of force you down a particular structure and then especially if you're dealing with a team of three, four, five, ten developers, uh, I think the structure is going to be everything. And, I, and also the new component model for a development team of that size uh, structure is going to be uh, the, the way the component model is, is structured is really going to help with a, a large team. So that way everyone's not stepping on each other like you don't have a single file with all your services. You don't have a single file with all your controllers and things like that. And you got five or six developers going after the same file. And then when it comes to check in all those merge conflicts that you may run into. So I think the component model is key. So that's why, you know, if you're looking to get into this, definitely look at Angular 1.5 plus. Uh, if you can go into Angular 2.0, I don't know if you're going to find a lot of examples or a lot of, you know, third party support as, as you may find in 1.5. Um, and then also, you know, look at the React stuff, look at, you know, download. I would start, I would just start playing with all this in Visual Studio Code only because most of the examples are going to have uh, Visual Studio Code uh, as their uh, IDE. And then, you know, then there's other utilities that you really have to come to, up to speed on. I mean, there's the Gulp uh, utility that really just kind of like it's like a, a task manager um, that you said to kind of build and, and serve applications. I'm sorry, serve your client site web part or your list app or any of the new modern stuff that's how they deploy it to the workbench and then eventually up to your your dev tenant and i'm sorry your dev site collection and your tenant um so gulp is kind of doing all that is very similar to the ms build process that kind of does that magic deployment and then refresh a, a studio um uh, especially like if you're used to studio and running it in uh, debug mode you know how you kind of hit the start uh the start uh the start uh action uh, in Visual Studio, then it kind of launches a new browser and start running your code there so you can kind of debug it and play around with it. Gulp is, is really the one that does that. And then you kind of have, uh, what's the other one? Oh, Gulp also works with um, uh, 
minimizing and bundling uh, files because one of the things that you would notice with this new component model, uh, the way the, the project file, the, the project solution is set up, it's not called a solution Visual Studio, but the project directory is set up. Each feature or function has its own subdirectory or you know, uh, it has its own folder. And then within that, you're gonna have the HTML, the JavaScript, you know, either the, the component.js and then the, the HTML template that supports it, and then all the, the routing config and all this other stuff within that folder tied to that feature or function. Well, because of that, the way that's structured, all your JS files, the CSS mm -hmm. and all this stuff is gonna be for that component or for that particular template. And when you go to build, you don't want to have like 20, 30, 40 references of CSS files and JS files and all this other stuff. So Gulp is really good to say kind of bundle those into one. So where you end at the end, you know, in release mode, you end up with a bundle.js and then maybe a, a bundle.css file, uh, but Gulp will kind of help you with that. And it will also help with minimizing, right? Because, you know, we, we use a lot of spacing and formatting and all the other good stuff to make sure it's readable from a developer standpoint, but uh, in runtime or in release mode, you want all that to be minimized. You want to try to get as, get rid of all the spaces, get all the verbose uh, variable names and all this other stuff. You want to get uh, minimize those just so that you're optimal from a client server or from a browser uh, standpoint. So, you know, there's different utilities that got different purposes. Uh, and it is, it, again, it's a brand new game than what we're used to in Visual Studio. I think we're, we're kind of spoiled in the sense that, you know, in a, a, in a SharePoint project in Visual Studio, you click build, the manifest, you know, all that stuff, it does all this magic behind the scenes. Uh, and then you, you can definitely have, you know, add in bundling and minimize and all that stuff as part of that process. But it packages up the WSP, you know, you know we kind of deploy that. If we were in the dev cycle, it was deploying that for us. If we wanted to get that from environment to environment, you know, we'll push those WSPs to some type of uh, deployment uh, process or automated deployment process, and everything was nice, right? It, it was done for us. We didn't have to worry about the structure and features. We didn't have to worry about the structure for proper web parts and all this other good stuff. So the game has changed. Uh, definitely get into the client side development. There's a lot of tooling out there. If you do a Google search on uh, SharePoint development framework, developer preview uh, at the time of this video, uh, there is going to be a step-by-step. -step. They, they actually did a pretty good job. Microsoft done a really good job with uh, spelling out step-by-step -step how you set up your environment, give you a, lot, uh, a few samples to work with uh, so that way you can kind of play around with it, get, get familiar with the different the, the, the development process, the deployment process locally, and kind of working with it from a dev standpoint. I don't think they complete the story as far as and, and, and they probably did this on purpose, right? Because it's preview. They, they don't want any of this work to end up in production, but they did not complete the story as far as, okay, this is done. How do I package this up and give it to, you know, my SharePoint admin, not site collection admin, SharePoint admin. There's, you know, those are new roles uh, in 0365, but how do I package this up and give it to the admin in order to deploy it so then it's readily available to my business users? They don't go to that extent, but to get your feet wet, you get comfortable, uh, definitely uh, check out the develop, uh, SharePoint development framework for developer preview and, and go ahead and get started. Again, you got to retool in order to remain marketable. You got to retool in order to remain the key person, the key go-to guy or gal in your organization for SharePoint development. All right, I, uh, I'll catch you on the next video.